You can choose today to make a world of difference. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Judy Weisbart, and I'm privileged to be the Vice President of Community Relations for the World Business Academy. I wanted to thank you all for coming today. I know that you will be inspired and moved in the next hour because in this room today, you can choose to make the world different. The film that you just saw was a window to the vision of the future. What's Possible was the opening film for the 2014 United Nations Climate Summit. We felt it was appropriate for you to see today. As you may have heard, Morgan Friedman was the voice. Unfortunately, he's unable to attend with us today. But we do have his resounding voice in the room. And we had a resounding sound from the wonderful music of Michael Brown earlier, for those of you who, who were here earlier. Thank you. Michael Brown is the son of Jerry Brown, my colleague, and the director of the Academy's Safe Energy Project. Michael just returned from two years of teaching English in China. He's living here now, and he's getting married next week, so a very busy man. Thank you so much, Michael, for spending your time with us. Today is a very exciting day. It's our second annual Safe Energy Luncheon. Together we have made a tremendous strides in just one year. We began by holding monthly meetings in February of this year, and now we're up to about 80 people per month. They gather to learn and support one another. We began a membership drive of the Academy. Could those who are members, associate members or members, just raise their hands? Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you. You committed to becoming the change that you want to see in the world and we truly appreciate it. We would love to have meetings in your homes and help you to maybe listen to the monthly radio show that is done each month, and we'll give you more information on that later, and to create discussions amongst your friends. We want to help you to become informed, inspired, and connected to us and to our community. This is the way that we will make a world of difference. Today, you will hear from our speakers, and you will view films that will amaze you, and you will learn solutions and scientific information that you will glean about healthier and economically brighter future for California and for the world. The films that we made, we were very fortunate to get help from Leslie Tolan, who is an editor, and we also got wonderful musicians to help create music. You will be quite thrilled, I think, by what you see. But now it's my turn, and my time, and my pleasure to introduce the executive director of the World Business Academy, Matt Renner. He is the face of our new generation. Matt comes from the world of online digital media, journalism, and organizing. He is passionate about the work that he does with the Academy and the shift of business towards stewardship for the planet. Please give a hand to Matt Renner. Wow, hi. I'm so moved to see so many people in this room. It is beautiful. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making the time. Um, I want to start, now that we're all in the room, uh, for a moment, if you would join me in a quick meditation or just breathing together, together. If you could put your feet on the ground and stop for a moment, even though there's delicious food in front of you. If you want to, please join me in closing your eyes. And go ahead and feel your feet on the ground and your body in the chair. And let this morning go. And let your thoughts about this afternoon go. And let's take three breaths together. Thank you. 
So it's my honor to speak with you today. Um, I'm up here to talk to you a little bit about what the World Business Academy is. And it's hard to describe in a few minutes because the World Business Academy is a strategy. It's a calling, it's a passion, and it's a dream, but at its core, it's a strategy. In the 21st century, as we look around us at the state of the world, it quickly becomes obvious that business is the most powerful institution on the planet. No government or ideology nor any other organizing principle is of greater consequence than business. It's easy to say that this is a bad thing, that given its track record, business should not have so much power, that in an ideal world, people should come together to make decisions about their lives and their communities, and that business should benignly serve these engaged, educated, and morally upright citizens. Unfortunately, we do not live in an ideal world. Right now, we in this room and human civilization as a whole are at the fork in the road. We face a choice. We stay on our current road and watch helplessly as global warming becomes a widening maw, subsuming every other crisis into its accelerating vortex. But today I bring a bright message from the future. This is my passion. The other road leads to a future rich with connection, a world where every person has their needs met and where humans live in alignment with the natural systems of the planet that give us life. Changing paths is the greatest challenge humans has, have ever faced, but this is also the most important opportunity in our evolutionary history. We bring you together today to begin to deepen your relationship with our organization. We welcome you, and we invite you to ask us questions and get to know us personally and join our efforts to lead with us and to make this challenge personal. I believe that our highest calling in our brief time here on Earth is to do our very best to be an excellent ancestor to the generations coming after us. For my generation, for your children, and for the children of your children, we must act now, together. Thank you for taking the time to hear more about how we can come together to change course and co-create a beautiful, regenerative future for all of those who come after us. Thank you. Now please join me in watching a short film about the recent accomplishments of the Academy this year. I've been working hard on this, so I'm very excited to show it to you all. And I have to run over and run the, run the projector, because I wear a lot of hats around here. The Academy had a number of things that were really uh, exciting last year. One was the closing of the San Onofre nuclear power plant. Radiation leak at an American nuclear power plant, San Onofre, 45 miles north of San Diego, California. Seven million Americans live within 50 miles of San Onofre. All of a sudden, that plant started spewing radioactivity in the air, so much so that the plant operators didn't even call headquarters to ask. They shut it down. Now, you don't shut down a nuclear power plant unless all the buzzers are going off, and that's what happened. Our calculation was that the public was entitled to at least $1.5 million or more in refunds for what had happened. They've already agreed it will be at least $1.4 billion. I believe it's going to go a little higher. I think that we also had a, a big year in terms of uh, getting their Fukushima study together so that we were able to start testing the sand uh, in Santa Barbara, California as part of a national study of how much radiation is now hitting U.S. shores from the continuing incident at Fukushima. People are dying because Diablo Canyon is operating. A 30-page study claims a probable link between radiation from the plant and an elevated risk of death and disease in San Luis Obispo County. New Jersey epidemiologist Joseph Mangano wrote the study. After crunching numbers from before and since Diablo went online, Mangano found that compared to the rest of the state, Slow County has faster rising rates of thyroid and breast cancer, melanoma, infant mortality, low birth weight for babies, childhood leukemia, and cancer deaths.
There are three main reasons why Diablo Canyon must be closed. The first, it is releasing cancer-causing radioactive isotopes into the environment. The second, it is destroying marine life through its cooling system, which emits hot water back into the ocean. And the third and most significant of all is it is at risk for a Fukushima-like earthquake, tsunami, and meltdown. So you're introducing carcinogens that are highly toxic, that cause things like leukemia and multiple myeloma and bone cancer. Breast cancer, prostate cancer, brain cancer, and a variety of these. There have been 19 published studies showing increases in childhood cancer around nuclear power plants. And it also happens to be at, built at the intersection of at least 13 earthquake faults. Two of those earthquake faults are major and active. There's a one in six risk of a major earthquake in every year that that nuclear plant is operating. In other words, the utility is playing radioactive roulette with the lives of the people on the central coast of California. Hello, I'm Dr. Jerry Brown. I'm the director of the Safe Energy Project of the World Business Academy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for all coming out here today. Today, I'd like to talk to you about, and it's my uh, role to really bring, be the bringer, bringer of the bad news and the difficult things to hear, but uh, if you stay tuned, you'll hear about the solutions very shortly. I'd like to talk to you about why Diablo Canyon, which is located 90 miles away from where we are sitting, is the most dangerous plant in America. I'd like to talk to you about why we believe we are at a tipping point in our campaign to close Diablo Canyon, much as we were a year ago with San Onofre. And I'd like to recommend that if we come out of this meeting today without, with sufficient funds, we have a very good chance of closing Diablo Canyon within the next two years. The nuclear industry is built on many big lies. One of them is that nuclear power is essentially environmentally friendly. Well, uh, through its once through cooling towers, now if you look at Diablo Canyon, you notice it doesn't have those kind of cooling towers the way you're familiar with uh, something like Three Mile Island. It takes in water. How much water? two and a half billion gallons a day from the ocean, uses that to cool the reactors, and then pumps that water back into the ocean 20 degrees hotter, killing over a billion fish a year. This is against the law. There's a 2010 state law that prohibits once through cooling in California. And PG&E, the owner of Diablo Canyon, has vigorously opposed this and has fought to get an exemption for Diablo Canyon. We here at the World Business Academy initiated an online petition campaign to prevent this exemption from happening. This campaign has been very successful. Tomorrow, Matt Renner and World Business Academy President Rinaldo Brutico will be at a hearing in Sacramento at the State Water Board where they are going to present over 10,000 signatures of citizens who want the law enforced, who want the Water Board to continue to protect our marine life and our coastal life. <laughs> we circulated this petition with the help of a friend, Friends of the Earth, a national organization, and the Mothers for Peace from San Luis Obispo, who've been in the battle against Diablo Canyon for 40 years. Would Jane Swanson and the Mothers for Peace please stand up? 
I want to thank you for coming down from San Luis Obispo. And I, I promise you that it won't take 40 years more to get this plant closed. We're told that nuclear power is safe. Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, Fukushima, need I say more? But beyond these accidents, the truth is that the normal operations of nuclear power plants emit radioactivity that the nuclear industry tells us is somehow safe. Well, the day after our event last year, we hired and commissioned a study that you heard about here to look at what happened to the cancer rates around Diablo Canyon before the plant opened and after 20 years of operation. And what Dr. Mangano found was that cancer rates went up, childhood health declined dramatically. This study has been submitted to a peer review journal and Senator Hannah Beth Jackson is calling for public hearings on the impact of Diablo Canyon on America's cancer epidemic. And if you'd like to hear the really good news, it's that in 12 reactors that were closed due to accidents or other issues, cancer rates declined dramatically and infant health improved after those reactors closed. Now we come to the greatest danger of all. This nuclear plant sits on 13 earthquake faults and two of them can cause the kind of ground motion that is two times greater than the plant was designed to withstand. The Union of Concerned Scientists in a report issued in 2013 said there is a one in six chance of a major earthquake that would overwhelm the plant safety system in every year that this nuclear plant continues to operate. One in six chance. In other words, PG&E is playing radioactive Russian roulette with the lives of people here on the central coast of California. Our strategy for closing Diablo Canyon is threefold. The first is political action before the state water board to enforce the law and require that PG&E build cooling towers there, which will cost $2 billion or more. And we're informed by the Utilities Commission that the cost of those cooling towers are not going to be passed on to ratepayers. Second, we've initiated legal action before the Utilities Commission to have an investigation of the economic viability of Diablo Canyon, which is no longer economically competitive, and to show that there are many other safer, cheaper sources of energy available to us here in California. And lastly, we would like to launch an education campaign going out to the energy leaders and political leaders in the state of California, telling them and informing them why Diablo Canyon is no longer necessary, why there are cheaper and uh, safer alternatives, and it will even create more jobs because every study that's been done shows that for every dollar invested in renewable energy, there are four times more jobs created than for any dollar invested in fossil fuels or nuclear power. So this is good for America, good for workers, and good for our future. In closing, I'd like to say that this strategy will increase the costs of operating this plant to the extent that at some point Pacific Gas and Electric is going to pull a plug on that nuclear power plant the same way that Edison pulled a plug on San Onofre a year ago in June of 2013. We ask you to support our campaign, not only for yourselves, but for all the future generations that would like to come and live in this beautiful place so that we can leave a lasting legacy of safe, clean, and sustainable energy. Thank you.
We would now like you to watch a brief video that shows where the World Business Academy is going in the next year. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept and one we intend to win. As one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. You know, when JFK gave his speech in 1961, he said, we will land a man on the moon and bring him back safely by the end of the decade. He had no clue of how he could possibly do that. We rose to the occasion, and we in fact did land a man on the moon, and we did bring him back safely by 1969. So our moonshot is 100% renewable California in 10 years or less, no fossil fuels, no nuclear. The clean energy moonshot is 100% achievable. The reality is that we're not dealing with rocket science. This is far easier than putting a man on the moon. You're talking more about the cell phone revolution, right? In 1996, no one had a cell phone. By 2006, they had the iPhone. And the idea is as basic as changing out a 19th century technology. And what we're proposing is that that entire system of grid as you know it be replaced by microgrids. Global warming has to be our top priority. The science is undeniable. We're staring down the barrel of a gun, potentially looking at the end of human civilization. And it's not happening in the future, it's happening right now. The greatest damage humans do to the Earth is the way we do energy, and we've got to change it, and we've got to change it fast. Unless we address climate change, I think we are facing a near extinction. It is, at the moment, I think the most urgent issue of our time. Climate change is a worldwide challenge that we, as a collective civilization here on Spaceship Earth, have to face. In order to rise to this challenge, we have to set really big goals. The Clean Energy Moonshot is an all-out sprint to 100% renewable energy, which is humanity's best strategy for mitigating climate change. Creating local energy systems called community microgrids will be crucial in achieving these aggressive renewable energy goals. We can uh, uh, enable a higher percentage of renewables, like a, a microgrid can eventually help to do 100% renewables. Community microgrids are the bridge between renewables and getting to very significant levels of renewable energy and the future of the energy system. When you start making these kinds of uh, technologies available, essentially what it means is that you're empowering the consumer, you're empowering the communities to be able to participate more actively. When you think about the electricity grid, you think about electricity generation first. And that's really going to come from solar, wind, geothermal, biomass. But those don't generate power exactly when consumers are using power. Hydrogen plays a beautiful role there. We're here at the Cal State LA station, which is the 10th station in the network to come online. We're making our hydrogen here from electrolysis. Basically, we're splitting water and we're using renewable energy. The most important aspect of a hydrogen fuel cell is the fact that we're using one of the purest uh, fuels that we have, which is hydrogen, and the only byproduct that we're getting out of it is just water. You can store it for an hour, a week, a month, a year, and it doesn't actually go bad. And then you can convert it back into electricity when you need it using fuel cells. We can start to develop hydrogen capability locally simply by having an electrolyzer facility combined with a large solar PV, combined with a fueling station for vehicles. We have 12 hydrogen buses that are part of our fleet and they're uh, fueled here on site with hydrogen that we actually produce from renewable energy sources. We can, in fact, collectively harness our creativity and our resources to heal the planet. We have the resources and all the technologies needed 
to move beyond the fossil fuel era to create a sustainable energy system. The World Business Academy recognizes that. It's about exercising the latent talent that resides in all of us to a collective call and collective engagement. Funding that kind of thinking, that kind of framework, uh, is a better approach than continuing to fund the status quo and hoping, praying, that somehow something's going to change. Funding the World Business Academy is funding the well-being of business and your communities ultimately of your country and the world. Right now we have a once in a millennia opportunity. We get to decide which path we take. We're asking you to join with us and to lead with us and to make this challenge personal. Support this effort with a financial contribution and with your time and together we get to create the future that we want. Thank you everyone again for coming. It's really great to see you all. Uh, my name is Ronaldo Brudico. I know many of you, not all of you, but soon I will hopefully will know all of you. Uh, since 1986, I've had the privilege of being the president of the World Business Academy. It's been, a lo it's been a long and interesting run. For those of you who are wondering why this is only our second annual fundraiser, I'll meet you in the hall after the, sh after the show. Before I get started, though, I have to tell you that <clears throat> I've had a lot of really wonderful partners. Some of the people in this room know about the 100-plus fellows like Deepak and, and the members like Jigger Shaw and the people who have been really supporters of the Academy. But the one constant and true supporter for all those years from 1986 is my business and life partner. I'd like you to meet my wife, Lala. Stand up. None of us would be here without her, particularly me. <laughs> um, so there's an interesting book that just came out called The Intelligent Optimist's Guide to Life, published by Yurian Kamp. Yurian, are you in the room? No, he didn't make it. Okay, so uh, there are a number of us who provided endorsements for this book. I was one of them. And um, here's the quote that Yurian chose to use of mine, which I want to give you because we've just talked about climate change. You heard Deepak say, and that, that was filmed three weeks ago, that he is now believes, and this is an actual quote, I can show it to you online in, at the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco where he and I did a panel a couple of uh, weeks ago. We are now looking at the inevitability, not the possibility, the inevitability of mass human extinction. Let that sink in. Mass human extinction doesn't mean we're going to lose a few hundred million people more or less here and there. Mass human extinction means five to six and perhaps seven billion people. It includes all of your children, all of the grandchildren you would or did or could have had. These are not alarmist numbers. These are real. We're more than happy to show you the math behind them and we'll show you how you get there. And the tragedy is, although the IPCC just recognized for the first time a month ago, that the Academy's position on this, which we've had for 10 years, they endorsed it by saying that if we don't solve it, there will be no human civilization by the year 2100. Came out four weeks ago. We've told them for years that number is actually 2065. And it doesn't go from zero to 2065 like it falls over a cliff. You saw Superstorm Sandy. What many of you probably didn't realize is the polar vortex, which affected over 42 of the contiguous states in the mainland of the United States. The polar vortex was hit because of a storm that hit the coast of Alaska so hard it dislodged the jet stream and we're still a month from winter. People experienced 30 degrees below zero, below zero, and even places like Minneapolis that's unusual, particularly a month before winter. That storm was not even a detectable threat six days earlier. In six days, it went from something in the tropical depression to a superstorm like Sandy that, but for the fact it hit Alaska with 50-foot waves where no one was living on the Aleutian chain, would have been another Sandy. So Sandy's already happened a second time. The third one's just around the corner. But I started by telling you about Urian's little book. Urian is the publisher of Ode, also the, the Daily Optimist, which is a wonderful thing you can get as an, on your, an app on your phone. 
And here's what I wrote in the front of that book that you decided to use. There's no problem in this world without a potential solution. What's too often lacking is the strategy to find these new solutions. That strategy is optimism. The desire to find the solution wherever it might be. It's the vital force for innovation in business and society. So no problem, including climate change, is beyond our capacity to solve. What we have to ask ourselves is how much pain are we willing to sustain before we choose to solve it? Another question would be, are we willing to wake up before it is too late? And we at the Academy have overwhelming evidence we can share with you that we've already passed the tipping point, which means if the world was to go to zero carbon dioxide emissions tomorrow morning, literally to zero, which no one's anticipating, and we will emit more CO2 tomorrow than we did today, you can count on it. If you went to zero tomorrow morning, it's already too late because of the methane releases. Like a show of hands, how many of you are aware of how much methane is gurgling out of the ocean these days? Do people out there know that? Okay, some of you did. Of those with your hands that just went up, are you aware that a 2,000 mile rift opened on the Atlantic seaboard about four months ago? So, some of you are. So <clears throat> people who don't know that don't realize what the impact of methane release is, which upon initial release is 60 times more heating of the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. So I was inspired when I was thinking about this little talk today to quote my dear friend Ian Watson, who I met many years ago in the World Business Academy. He lives in London. And he, he asked me at one point, why are you so committed? And I said, well, I'm not sure there's another choice. If you knew what I know, you'd have to be committed. And he thought about that and he wrote me a little note. And he said, Ronaldo, I want to share this with you. Here's what I think about commitment, yours and everybody else's. He wrote, commitment is not easy. It is making the time when there is none, finding resources when there seem to be none. It is overcoming what appear to be impossible obstacles. It is the daily triumph of integrity over skepticism. It is the coming through time after time, year after year after year. Commitment is choosing to be effective and about saying, I will find a way to make this happen. It is about being out there exposed, vulnerable, even subject to ridicule because intensity, something I'm often accused of, uh, is often considered bad form. <laughs> Commitment also has its rewards. It is feeling good about yourself because you know you are being true to yourself and your word. It is what brings light to our faces and to our lives. So what today's lunch is about for me is an opportunity to ask you to join in creating the solutions and to share that level of commitment. I'm really humbling asking each and every one of you for your support, and frankly, for support for people we don't know yet and haven't entered this room. It's gonna take a lot of us, a whole lot of us, to make the changes that we absolutely must make for my children, my grandchildren, and frankly, for anybody who's under the age of 45. So we've got to do this now, and we're really out of time. And when I say that I'm humbly asking you for your support, I really mean that because I've gotten this as far as I can go as one guy. And when we started doing these luncheons last year, we said, look, if the city of Santa Barbara will support this and other people around the country, we can get this done. We can get San Onofre closed. We can get $1.5 billion back. We can test the sand of Fukushima. By the way, sad footnote, Fukushima continues to this day. You know, that reaction never stopped. It's going on every day. Hundreds of millions of gallons of contaminated water hitting the ocean every day for Fukushima. And the first absolutely traceable cesium deposits have been found in the state of Washington with the unique signature of Fukushima. So we know our sand is next. So, bad news, good news? The good news is, as Walter Cronkite observed, I never had an ambition to do something personally. I had the ambition to actually be and do everything. So the goal for us today is simply this. We want us to think globally, but we want to act locally. We want you to know that in your program guide, we put this little thing about Santa Barbara as the Athens in the time of Pericles, the golden age. We did that for a reason. 
We did that because we believe that Santa Barbara is capable of becoming a city-state where its citizens can actually create the solutions here that not only work for Santa Barbara, but work around the world. I'm gonna make one other observation. Many of you did not know this. I didn't know it till a couple of weeks ago. Santa Barbara is hanging by a thread electrically, and in a report issued in 2012 by Southern California Edison, it predicted some of the brownouts that we just had, and that we would, in the case of a bad firestorm or of a flash flood, perhaps lose power for as much as five weeks. I had the good fortune, I want to thank the mayor for coming here. I had the good fortune to speak with her about this last week and to be able to say thank you very, very much for knowing about this report. How can we help to make Santa Barbara a place where the lights don't go out? That's called resilience. So, in conclusion, I want to say that Archimedes was right, the ancient Greek philosopher. We are the people, now is the time. And what he said was, if you give me a place to stand, a fulcrum, and a long enough lever, I can move the planet. He meant we could move the planet. Or as Arthur Ashe said so brilliantly, the great tennis player and social activist, from what we get, we make a living. What we give, however, makes a life. Thanks for living and for your lives. Now the fun part. First of all, I want to thank you all for listening to that speech. It's one of the things that got me when Ronaldo told it to me and, and brought me home to the reality, fully engaged in this. And I feel it's an honor to spend 100% of my effort working on this cause. And there are beautiful, amazingly supportive people coming out and, and supporting this effort. And I want to tell you about one of them right before I introduce Barbara. We got a gift of a challenge donation that we're going to try to match today of $50,000. The first $50,000 we raise today from an anonymous donor will be matched to support this effort. Dollar for dollar, it will double your pledge. And I'm just so honored to have that from our anonymous donor. And you know who you are, so thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to welcome Barbara Gon Mueller to the stage. I'm, uh, may I go on with my introduction? Thank you. Um, Matt sure makes it easy for me to tell us that we already have $50,000. I'm looking out here at some of the elected officials. If you're an elected official, would you stand up so we can thank you? Mayor, um, look, West. I always feel so honored because you work so hard and I don't know if we thank you enough. Um, and so I've been a fan of the World Business Academy for many years and in 2005 they gave my late husband, Dr. Robert Mueller, then the award called, let me just tell you exactly what the award was, because when I saw that he got the humanitarian award, I realized they're just not here to ask you for your money, they're here to follow through. I always look at people who ask me for money and I say, where's my money really going? I look at the end result. If I give you this vote, and remember, every dollar is a vote. If I give you this vote, where is that going to go? So when I looked at the World Business Academy and they gave Robert the Humanitarian Award, I thought, okay, what can I do to help them? What can I be for them? Each of us has a responsibility today to be here for our grandchildren. When my little Sophie says to me, Grandma, what are you doing about the world's problems? And she's eight years old. How come they're so smart? Because they have TV, they have iPhones, and they have enlightened parents. And you are the enlightened people here today as I look at you. I know most of you. And I'm just so honored to ask you, that table captains, I'm going to ask you to hand out your blue envelopes. This is the part of the game that we all have to get a pencil for. We have to have a blue envelope. And pretty soon I'm going to ask you, in our world, if you can't volunteer to do something special, as Jerry Brown did at our recent conference called Youth 
in peril. And we looked at the problems our youth are facing. And we looked at the solutions. And in about eight hours, we came up with a charter for youth. Now today, this is about the future of our planet, the future of our youth. And together, we can embrace what we know as we join hands to reach the goal of listen to this, guys, $250,000. Now, don't panic. You don't have to do it all today because you're going to have this beautiful form that will allow you to have a little more opportunity to spread it out in the next few years. All right, as soon as everybody has an envelope, I'll start you, but you have to hit your pencil first. I used to be a school teacher, and I would always say, pencils up. So as soon as you all have your pencils, I want, we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to hold your pencils up. You know the acoustics are pretty bad in here, so just start giving us money. Because if, if, if you can't hear me, it doesn't matter. You've got the form in front of you. Okay, the World Business Academy campaign for a safe energy luncheon. As Ronaldo said, we don't ask you for money very often, but when we do, we're very, very serious. So, pencils up. Pens, you're even better. Okay, my children weren't allowed to have pens, so let's go. When you look at your form, let's go to the front first. Go down to the bottom and just put your name. See the word name? Fill in your name, it's real easy. Just put in your name and put in your address. Now, that's just the first part. Then you go back up to the top, and I'm gonna give you a minute to put your name and your address and your city, your state, and your zip. Now, under that it says, check to make sh to stay anonymous. If you want to be anonymous, just check that right now. We promise we won't tell anybody who gave us a million dollars. We'll just keep it to ourselves. When you are done with that, go up to the top. It says, campaign for safe energy luncheon. That's the first page. I would like to become a founding member of the World Business Academy. And I'm looking right there at some of you who are going to check off the first one, 12,000 a year for three years or five years. I almost felt like giving you an extra dessert if you checked it off. <laughs> That's a project sponsor. We'll even take you on a boat ride. Next is the member that we appreciate because you're going to give us 6,000 a year. For how many years? If that's not enough, three or five, you may put six in another box. But if you do that, just think what we can do with that money. I'm seeing some people write those names, thank you. The next one is member for 3,000 a year for three years or five years. Last year, doctor, I'm sure he won't mind if I tell you this. Dr. Jose was at my table and he said to me, I never gave anybody any money before. Now don't tell him I told you this, but today I was so convinced that my dollars were going to be put to good use, I filled out the form. I'm hoping you'll do the same. Supporting member, I think we've talked about 1,000 a year for three years or five years. And last but not least, this is the one I always check because I'm president of the United Nations Association and we don't get a salary, so I always check off associate member, 300 a year for three years. That's less than $20 a month. That's just two lattes a month, no. Two lattes a day. Anyway, to make a long story short, when my granddaughter Sophie says to me, Grandma, what are you doing? I said, sweetheart, I'm working on safe energy. And she says, well, good for you. She's only eight and my other, they're twins. And Bridget always says, now, Grandma, when you come to see us, show us how we're supposed to have safe energy. And I show them a little film and they start to get it. So let's talk about other ways that we can contribute. I contribute by being president of the United Nations Association. I contribute by helping Jerry and Ronaldo and his group of mats, 
helping us make the world safer. I would like to contribute in other ways. Let's suppose you have a Mercedes that you say, I just don't know what to do with it. Well, put it down and we'll auction it off at the next luncheon and um, I'm going to sit in the front seat with you. If you have a, a boat that you said, I'll take people around Santa Barbara for $50 a piece, put that down. How do you want to contribute? Now, if you want to contribute $2 million, you can also put that down for how many years? One time gift. I'm seeing some pencils go. And then last but not least, contact me about paying my pledge with stock. This is a real good time to do that. I have friends that are putting their stock away and saying, that's the end of it for me. I'm taking my deductions this year and I'm going to go sailing. So if you want to do that and you want to give us all your stock so you don't have to worry, don't worry. We'll take care of it. And last but not least, I have other thoughts to share. This is really important. The Youth in Peril conference that we did, we had 12 small groups. What we found was the most exciting part of the conference was hearing the opinions of each person who was present. Your voice counts. You don't have to be Deepak Chopra to talk, but we will listen to you. If you have an idea of how the World Business Academy can make this world better, you have an idea for people who would like to be involved. Ronaldo, Jerry are here, Matt is here, and Matt's wonderful to talk to. Okay, now let's suppose you wanna make your payment today because you don't like to be billed. Well, you just make your payment to the World Business Academy and put the date and just hand it in, and I'll even collect it personally. Um, if you wanna put it on a Visa MasterCard, American Express, that's also available. But remember, you have to give us your name. It's really important. So if you haven't put your name down, please do so. Now, if you turn your card over, for current members, that would be me, my annual payment pledge is enclosed. You can just hand it to us. Uh, you can check how many years you want to make a multiple year pledge. You can increase my financial commitment, or I have already sent in a pledge this year. This about at the bottom, it says, thank you for your support. And I do thank each of you for being here today. We're all busy. I remember David Tiedemann saying, today I'm gonna to ask you to change your mind. If you didn't already pledge, I'm gonna ask you to change your mind. Go back to the front. Give it another try. What can you feasibly do to make this world work better? So Jerry doesn't have to come around and say, Barbara, you have 10 cents? I have to go up to and close Diablo. Okay, I am ready. If you are ready, Judy, are you coming back up? Or are we just gonna sing God Bless America? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look at the program because I think we're almost done, can you believe it? Anybody that keeps their word and lets you go home on time is worth their salt. God bless you all, thank you, thank you for being here. I just wanted to thank Barbara for being the wonderful woman that she is. This is the second year she's done this. Thank you so much. If everyone would hand their envelope to their table captain, they'll put it back in the envelope. Jerry just showed it over here. And we wish you all a wonderful day. Please stay if you wish and chat. Otherwise, we'll see you this time next year. Thank you. Thank you.